Hello Power Rangers Lightning Collection fans, and welcome to Lightning Aftermath. Yep, so this is the sequel series to Lightning Storm, my typical Saturday series that I've been doing at Toku Topics ever since June of 2020. If you saw the most recent episode of Lightning Storm this past Saturday, which I highly recommend that you watch before this video, episode 216 of Lightning Storm is probably the most important one that I have ever made, or it's definitely, certainly up there. And with this kind of being where we're at at this point, this hiatus upon us, or going to be upon us very soon, I need a replacement. I need a replacement for Lightning Storm for this channel because I still want to talk about this line to all of you guys, and I still want to bring you a Saturday series that I'm known for doing here on this channel. I love doing a bunch of other content that is not Lightning Collection related, and but I do know that a lot of this audience here is here for Lightning Collection things, even though the channel's not specifically named that. And that's perfectly, perfectly good, and I want to bring that to still be a thing for you guys. So what is Lightning Aftermath? Well, first of all, I like keeping in the whole theme of weather-related terms. So the aftermath of a storm is when there's kind of just all these pieces all over the place, and you gotta pick them up, right? And one of the best ways to pick everything up is with the community helping to rebuild. And that's what I want to do with this series. If you've ever seen an episode of Lightning Storm that I ended with a Lightning Strike of the Week segment, which I didn't do all the time, I usually save those for whenever there is a very lack, you know, luster week of news and I needed something to fill for an extra story. Well, that's what this series is. This is going to be taking those stories and expanding them into their full, into like big full videos. Uh, but it's not even going to just be that. It's also going to be, this is going to be the platform that I use to sort of look back at the line and look at the different things that really, really went wrong with this line and how we got to this point nearly five years into its existence and why we, you know, have the situation that we have. But what I really want to use it for is to the best of my ability and what we can do as a ranger nation, as a community together, is I want to see what can we do. You know, if we collected the lightning collection, how can you still continue to collect the lightning collection even without Hasbro? Because there are so many talented people in this community who make videos, who take pictures, who make custom figures, who do so many different things that you can do to still add something really valuable and really cool to your collection that isn't a mass produced, you know, retail figure from a big giant company who will just throw the line away at the easiest convenience. There are people who collected the slime, spent thousands of dollars on it, and I spent thousands of hours of my life dedicated to bringing you all the news of the entire line as much as I could, as often as I could, and as detailed and accurate as I could. It was my biggest series that I've ever made. It's the most important thing that I have ever created in my life. It's changed my life, and I am not going to just give that up. The Lightning Collection is not Hasbro. The Lightning Collection is ours. So we're going to continue it, and we're going to do it our way. Welcome to Lightning Aftermath. Today I have a very exciting box to take a look at here. I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you. Uh, so this is a box that comes from Kyle, a Deadpool Ranger on Twitter. So recently he's been putting together these 3D printed stands for Lightning Collection figures. Uh, he had like these base ones that had like team logos on them, uh, ones that you can hang up on your wall, uh, these really cool Dino Fury cockpit like recreation looking ones. And he reached out to me and asked if he could send me some to take a look at. And I was like, yes, please, <laughs> I would love to see them. So this box arrived and uh, let's take a look at what's in here. He did ask for like some preferences uh, of what I kind of would have wanted, but I'm not sure exactly which ones he sent me. So like color wise and stuff like that. So let's take a look and uh, show them off with some lightning collection figures. So thank you, Kyle, for wanting to send these my way and be sure to contact him if you like what you see here because he sells them and you can buy them. And I will link his Twitter in the description below, by the way, as well, because this is really cool. So he did let me know that one of them, the, the Dynafree one in, in particular, is in like, you have to assemble it. So let's see, what do we have here? Ooh, oh, nice. Okay, so we have a pink SPD stand. So what's really cool is that he's sculpted, this is nice, I, 3D printed stuff just feels cool. Uh, so he sculpted the peg holes that are on the bottom of the feet there so that you can peg them in in three different little intervals. And then you have this really nicely sculpted SPD logo. So that is very, very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the texture down there. I know it's just kind of from the 3D printing, but I think that looks cool. So there's SPD. And then my favorite season, he printed Dino Thunder. 
which I really like this one as well. So there's two of the bases, or just kind of the normal bases. Uh, this one that we have here, I believe is, yes, this is just one of the kind of generic ones. Uh, isn't, you know, color coded, isn't team branded or anything like that. It's just a nice little, you know, kind of, not clear stand, but kind of blends in, especially like on this white shelf uh, that is really nice. So I like that a lot. Uh, let's see here. I assume, oh, we have one more that is not the uh, assembly required one. So this one. Oh, right, yes. So he had, um, this is really cool. He had a wall mounted one. And he actually included a command strip with it, which is really nice. So this one here, you can take it, and there's the space back here, you can mount it to your wall. So if you want to have these up on your wall like that, and he has the Power Ranger logo there, the, the Power Ranger lightning bolt. I really like this one. I wish that I could demonstrate it nicely. Uh, the walls in my room are very textured, so things don't like to stay on them very easily. Uh, so that I wish that I could, uh, but this is really, really cool. Uh, and actually, I just kind of like this even without it being mounted. It just kind of just back piece with the Power Ranger logo. I actually just think that that looks pretty slick. So we have these four stands, which is a good array and kind of a good variety of the ones that he offers uh, to make and stuff like that. And then finally, I believe that is all those pieces there. Yep, let's go ahead and get this box out of here. So just in time for Wave 14's Dino Fury Blue, we have the Dino Fury Megazord uh, kind of uh, base like pedestal. I don't know exactly, it's a, I guess the cockpit pedestal. Uh, so here it is in blue with the Dino Fury logo right there. And then let's see here. So he said there's some assembly or there's some like pieces of glue that you have to use or like a piece of glue. And honestly, I'm not sure exactly how you assemble this, but I will figure it out. You get these two pieces here and you get this piece. And I'm going to refer to a picture of this to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Because I know he constructed it in a way to where you can slot the uh, Chroma Fury Saber in there. So give me a second to figure it all out and get it all correct, and I will return. And there is the fully constructed Dino Fury Zord cockpit stand. So uh, this is really cool and really easy to put together. Uh, these two pieces just clipped in there, and this is the one he said you needed glue for. I actually didn't use glue, I just used sticky tack just in case I wanted to be able to take this apart uh, and fit it kind of in my cases and stuff like that. But this is really, really well done. I'm very, very impressed with this. And there is a slot there for a Chroma Fury Saber. Uh, which is perfect because we just got Dino Fury Blue in Wave 14. So you, of course, have the uh, you know feg uh, the feet pegs. So we can go ahead. Yep, there goes that piece. I knew I was going to bump something and knock it over. And his foot is all twisted. And there he is. So I think this looks really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, what's also nice, too, is that by putting the Chroma Fury Saber in there, it kind of can sort of help straighten it out a little bit since they're usually all pretty pre-bent in the package. Uh, but yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this looks. Obviously, I just kind of have him standing there. It'll look cool if he's in more of a dynamic pose. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and grab some figures to put on all these other stands, and we'll kind of take a look at that to wrap up this video. And there we go. So I kind of tried to match up the colors a little bit. Obviously, I didn't with Dino Thunder. I just have Connor put away right now, but I had Tommy out, so I figured why not. I put uh, Sid on her Pink Ranger SPD stand. I wanted to demonstrate that the ninjas can balance on there on the white one. Uh, this was kind of like an off-white, and I figured it kind of fit the Skelly Putties pretty nicely. And, of course, we have Dino Fury Blue. So... These are really cool. I like the different uniqueness aspects of them. Uh, the different colors, uh, the quality is really good, the sculpting is very good, the wall mounting functionality is great, the actual like you know show prop kind of recreation is great. I really like these. So once again, huge, huge thanks to Kyle, uh, Deadpool Ranger, for sending these my way. Uh, I'm going to be putting prices up on screen right now of what he charges for each kind. Uh, and I will also, of course, like I said earlier, be leaving his Twitter in the description below so you can reach out to him and have them 3D printed for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter, at Living Ranger Key, or Lightning PR. And I'll see you all later. To wrap up this video, I'd like to thank my $5 and above patrons, Jurassic Samurai, Maggot Alchemist, Robert Browning, Static Thunder, Brendan Overland, Maji Yellow, MCPC Studios, Comix1017, James Darty, Eric Berry, Tyler Bezetsky, Matthew Thorne, Josh Landry, Pyramidus, CBT Tesla, Cross SCV, Gaboose Ed, Socket Monsters, Anthony Love, Daniel Pika, Hella Geo, Thrasher, Jesus Prime, Uni Warrior Thomas, Louis Carnes, and Carlos Alfredo. You can support Toku Topics for as little as $1 a month on my Patreon, linked in the description below.